Hi, this is Robert from Part Fusion Electronics. This week I wanted to do an experiment with some resin to try and reproduce the color, the diffuse color that you get in these LEDs. So I've got a clear LED here and I've got this diffused LED. So with, a, with the clear LED, this white LED, most of the light is shining out from the kind of the top of the, the LED and almost nothing is appearing, is coming out towards the side where with the, the diffuse LED, this is an RGB LED, um, you can see much more of the light comes out of this, the sides of the LED. So I was going to try and use some resin to reproduce um, this effect. So normally, if you're kind of doing some, kind of you'd use something like this epoxy clear resin. So it's two part, um, you mix like an A and B, and it, it, it takes about um, 24 hours to, you know, to seven, 72 hours, depending on the type, to, uh, to harden. So I wanted something a little bit um, to work a bit more quickly. So I've got some um, UV resin here. So this is um, a clear resin and you use a UV light. So I have a small UV torch here to, to kind of activate and start the hardening. So with this little torch, it takes about um, three to five minutes for the, the UV light to, 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 to come hard. Because I'm trying to make a kind of a diffused color, something kind of like a white is, is probably what I need to use for, for this. Um, so I've, got, I've gotten some of these alcohol inks from Jacquard alcohol inks. So this is the white and then I've got a black. So one problem I have with the, these types of inks is, is, and for what I'm trying to produce here is, realistically I want some to kind of transparent color. And you can see here on the black, so this is a transparent, so it's more like a dye. It will um, kind of dissolve into the liquid um, and it will turn it black or gray. I also have a, a gray, gray version of the um, transparent ink. Um, but it will basically dissolve completely into the, into the um, the resin and you shouldn't see any kind of particles or whatever where this is an opaque ink and I believe how this works is this has a white particles that are suspended into the um, the resin and at a high enough concentration it, it doesn't really matter they, they will kind of blend into one and you just have a kind of um, a kind of a matte or a shiny white surface. Um, but for what I do, I'm probably going to need a very low uh, concentration of the the LED, of the, the color. So I think you might actually be able to see the particles or the, the materials. So I'm not sure this is actually going to work for what I'm, for my desired results. Um, I also had, had bought some of the kind of, so this is a, a the dry powder pigment. So that's kind of what's suspended into this um, alcohol ink. So this is just powder and you can mix that into the resin and, but you'll probably still again see the, the particles of, of the powder in a very, when it's in a very low concentration. So what I'll do first is I'll, I'll just cure some of the, um, the UV resin. So what I need for that is I've got a bit of, so this is some blue tape with some wax paper um, on the back side, so it's a bit more stable. And then you take your UV resin and you open it up, it's usually got a seal on the inside of it. So it's quite a thick resin. Um, so this bottle's nice because it has um, this kind of screw cap. So you can actually um, just, I'll just place it. So I don't have to worry about bubbles in, in what I'm doing here for this experiment. Um, 
So if you take the UV light, um, you could probably you should probably use in gloves. The um, there's not a strong smell of the the um, the resin. It's kind of a bit. It is. It's a bit like a synthetic um, pine type of resin smell. A little bit fumey. If for people who, are, who don't really like those, they might want to wear a respirator mask. Um, have the windows open. Um, so as you can see, the the resin hasn't spread a huge amount. And if I then hold my UV light over it for about three minutes, three to five minutes, it will it will it will harden up. Um, so I'll come back in a sec in a couple of minutes when that's hardened. So it's been um, three, maybe five minutes, and the um, I believe the resin is now um, hardened enough. And what I, I've been doing is is I've just been kind of kind of sticking my tweezers in here, and, and I can feel it's it's gone hard. So one feature or miss feature of of this kind of UV resin is when it goes hard, it does have a kind of a sticky residue, an oily, an oily kind of sticky residue. And I think you need to use maybe some alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, to um, remove that. As I said, this doesn't really matter for what I'm, got, what I'm, the experiments I'm doing here today. So I might just wipe it off with a bit of tea towel. But it only seems to be the air exposed side that has the residue. So I'm not sure the exact chemical reason. This, but I, I, I believe this resin is the same type that they would use for um, in a nail salon. You know, where you'd stick your hands into it, get you have um, the nail polish put on your hands and then put inside um, a small UV box. And I think you can get another type of this UV resin that, like a top coat, which doesn't have this um, oily residue. I'm not sure if it's oily, but this kind of sticky residue that, that comes off. Um, we can see here that it's somewhat flexible. I think it maybe if I left it a bit longer, it'd become harder. Um, but as I said, I'm, I'm looking at this from the, the coloring point of view. So I've got a small little um, sauce container and I'm going to use some of my white ink. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of the ink into the, the container and then add in the UV resin, put a bit of the um, the, the colored resin onto the, my tape here and then dilute it a little bit more and add take, so maybe do about five or six um, dilutions. So maybe just go with one drop to start off with. quite possible that I have put too much of the the ink into the the mixture. So I'll mix this up. So one advan another advantage of this UV resin um, is that it you it doesn't activate unless you have the UV light on it. So if you cover this up, um, I think it could basically last indefinitely, where if you're working with the, the two parts, once you've mixed the two parts together, the, um, you have a limited amount of time. It might only be a couple of minutes or maybe a couple of hours, depending on the type of, of resin that you're using. So let me put down a 
blob of this opaque One other issue I might have with this technique is that the white may actually stop the UV light from getting to the bottom and allow me to fully harden the resin. Okay, so if I add another kind of dollop of the resin and mix that in. To dilute the the white ink. And we'll go again, do more dilution. As I've been going through, at least when I'm looking kind of through the cup, the light through the cup, it does seem to be becoming more translucent, which is to be expected. But when I'm actually placing it onto this kind of darker background, it still seems quite um, opaque. So I'm kind of guessing you're going to need a very, very dilute mixture if you're going to try and achieve um, the kind of similar colouring of a, these, these diffu diffused LEDs. I think I'm going to have to do some significant diluting with this technique. I did find a product, like a commercial project you can buy that's uh, like a potting compound that has a cloudy diffused resin potting compound and I might buy some of that to have a look to see if I can kind of figure out kind of my own version if this um, paint or pigment technique doesn't work. The kind of recommended way of removing the bubbles from the, the UV resin, people tend to use a lighter or like a a barbecue lighter or you can use like a heat gun but if because this is an alcohol ink um, I'm not sure how flammable the resulting resin is I think it'd probably be better to recommend not to use a, a lighter to try and remove the bubbles you start to see These last two do seem to have a kind of similar color to the diffuse LED. What I might do now is I still have some kind of pigmented resin in my cup. I could dilute it a little bit more. I think then I'll, that'll be the last batch not to waste too much. Well, waste in, by experimenting. I think also some of the, the color is going to be because there's a lot of bubbles in this now. And they will have a, 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 a kind of natural diffusing effect on the resin. What I might do with the remaining um, resin I have here is I've got some of the silver uh, pigment and I'm just going to add a little bit in there just to see what the um, what the silver looks like just as a to not kind of waste the material the resin too much. So this has a small little ball bearing in it that you need to shape around to, to um, get the um, the silver pigment suspended in the, in the liquid. Again, I might have some issues with the, the resin curing due to the, um, the silver pigment being quite opaque. The color is quite nice. So after mixing up the silver, I'll just place it down. So if I had a proper um, nail salon kind of box, I could kind of um, use my UV light to cure all these in a kind of one go, but I'm going to have to go and shine my UV light on each one of these.
for about five minutes each. So I'll be back in a little bit. So it's um, now a couple of hours later. One thing I hadn't realized is, is the type of pigment that they used in this ink. is titanium dioxide, the same as this um, pigment powder. The other type of white paint that they have is a zinc oxide. Um, the thing about both of those is they're both used as uh, used in sun cream. So that meant that I needed a little bit more time to um, cure the different types of um, quantities of resin. So these ones are quite hard now, but this first one I had mixed is actually still soft. It's, there's um, uncured resin on the other side. So realistically what I need to do is shine, shine the UV torch on it. So what I was doing in, for this case, I was taking two uh, lollipop sticks and I was just kind of leaving the torch on there for maybe, it was taking about, this, this torch was taking maybe five, 10 minutes. So I have actually ordered, while I was waiting, I, I ordered um, one of the nail salon machines, UV lights, so I can, for some future work, I'm gonna play around with. Look, looking at these, actually I'm quite pleased with the, the results. I think they have a very similar kind of a appearance. So when you kind of dilute down the, the the pigment, it does give a very similar effect. So it might be worth trying with some other, um, like as I said, some of, this, some of these kind of two-part epoxy um, resins, trying to maybe be a bit more calculated in terms of how I delight this. So maybe it's like one milliliter of this to one liter of the, the resin just trying different concentrations. The silver is also, I think that's still somewhat soft on the other side. Again, that's quite opaque um, to UV. So the, the, these two colors do seem to, um, it, the fact that they're opaque means they do have a bit more of a blocking effect on the UV light, so you need to be a bit more um, Careful with how they, how you use them. I think I think these are the ones. They might because they're dark. They would also, if you have a very thick quantity of it, it probably wouldn't be ideal. But for just for coating and um, making very thin layers, I think these, the this UV resin, and you know these types of pigments would work. If you're going to use some, you know, like something like this pearlescent powder or something, I think you have to be a bit more cautious about how thick you, you you maybe have to do multiple layers if you do a very thin layer and then a color and then lots of thin layers. Anyway, leave that for today. All right, thank you, bye.